You guys remember the Atom Smasher pistol build, right? It's got a brother now. Sunday Gun Day. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today is a pretty special day. Almost a year ago I put together my favorite AR pistol build and dubbed it the Atom Smasher. I will leave links to all of the different videos and information about that build in the description down below. Now I started to get the itch to build again but I was so happy with that original Atom Smasher that the only thing that I could really think to do was build another one. Sometimes I think I like building these guns more than I actually like shooting them in the end, so I tackled this one with the same OCD mindset as the first. And damn did it turn out good, so let me introduce you to the Atom Smasher 2.0. The OG Atom Smasher got its name from the receiver set manufacturer's logo, Mega. Mega had already been bought out by Zev Technologies when I built that pistol, so I figured going forward I might as well base this rifle build off of the new and improved Zev receiver sets. These ambidextrous receivers are precision machined from solid billet aluminum and are held to extremely tight tolerances and high quality standards, so needless to say, it shows. To go along with the receivers, I have also fitted this rifle with a Zev 14 inch wedge lock handguard as well as their ambi charging handle. Now since the bolt and mag catch are also ambi thanks to the receiver set, I decided to use Strike Industries for both of these parts. I went with the Strike Enhanced versions for both of these and they match the build very well. Also from Strike, I used their receiver pins, dust cover, forward assist, and foregrip which you may recognize from a lot of my other builds. Just like the pistol, I also used some Geisley goodness with their Super 42 braided buffer spring, and since this will be a great build for longer distances, I decided to give their single stage precision trigger a try. On the back end, I decided to keep the lightweight theme going by using a Battlelink minimalist stock. I think it looks great, it has all of the standard functionality, and it comes in at just under 6 ounces. Now for where the magic happens, I am using a Sharps Rifle Company XPB bolt carrier group, a Nordic 16 inch barrel and a Surefire War Comp on the end. To top it all off, there are Embus Pros on the rail accompanied by a Trigicon MRO on the Scalarworks Leap Mount. So as you can tell, just like the OG Atom Smasher, there were no corners that were cut here. Since I was so OCD with the first build and I spent a lot of time buying different parts and figuring out what worked and what didn't work with a build of this caliber, putting this 2.0 version together went much, much smoother. I didn't need to buy duplicate parts if something didn't quite fit the bill for this build. Everything came together great and so far I am very happy with the end result. Now what I really need to do is make sure that this thing functions, so let's head out here for a first mag impression. Now there's a very good chance that I'm going to have to actually sit down and zero this thing. I did just throw all the sights on and try to co-witness the MRO with the MBUS flip up sights like I typically do. But for now we're just going to see how this thing does. I definitely do need to zero this thing just a little bit, so let's take it back to about 100 yards and then I'll sit down with another mag and see if we can get this thing a little bit closer. All right, we're back here now. This is not the ideal situation to actually get this thing super precisely zeroed, but it's better than standing up. Now let's see where we're at. Let's try the smaller target. Maybe I was just a little too close. This thing seems to be pretty much on at 100. Maybe I need to bring it up just a tiny bit. Might as well give the irons a try as well. It's looking pretty good, but I still think I'm gonna bring it up just a couple clicks. Let's give that a shot. Is 
this trigger is so light. I think that'll be good enough for now. All right guys, first mag or two mag impression of the Atom Smasher 2.0. The first thing that came to mind was this muzzle brake. This is the Surefire War Comp and I have it timed up to be directly in the center, which would be good for a left-handed or right-handed shooter. I of course am right-handed, but the reason I did that was because this entire thing is ambidextrous already, so I might as well keep that even. Now I'm used to shooting a lot of these very short builds that I've been doing a lot of recently, so switching back to a 16 inch dedicated rifle, especially with a comp like that on the end, this is a very nice change of pace. It is not spitting massive fireballs, it's not super loud and concussive. A setup like this is definitely one of the more flatter shooting guns that I've put together in a while. With choosing all of these high end parts, this thing feels very very smooth right from the get go. I really didn't do a whole lot of oiling to this thing, I just put it together with the normal specs that I would any other rifle. And so far, everything does feel pretty damn good. One thing that I did notice when looking back through the footage is that the ejection pattern on this thing may be a little bit to the overgas side. It did look like some of those rounds were coming a little bit forward out of the gun. That's still not a huge deal, I'd rather have it be overgassed than undergassed. I did not put an adjustable gas block on here, so that will remain the same for now. But one thing that I could do is just increase that buffer weight from Geisley. I am running the Super 42 braided spring in here like I did in the original Atom Smasher and the weight of that is adjustable so I could swap something in there if I wanted to but for now I'm just going to keep running this thing and break it in a little bit more and then I will see if I need to do any adjusting from there on out. Now some of the other key features of this gun you see me put on a lot of my builds one being the Strike Industries Curve foregrip up here. I love the way that this thing looks aesthetically it fits these builds very very well. The front end of this is good if you want to press it up against a table or maybe on like the side of a wall. But for the most part, I just use it for indexing in between my two middle fingers. It definitely complements the Zev handguard very nicely. I prefer a thinner handguard like this. And I will probably end up saying this a lot throughout the video, but the finish on these Zev parts is top notch. It is very similar to the original Atom Smasher, but this thing may just be a little bit nicer. Now some other commonly used parts are the Radiant Talon Selector. This is definitely my favorite safety selector that you can put on an AR platform. It is a 45 degree select and it does match the finish of the Zev receiver sets very well. Another thing that I also use on the original build kind of was the Geisley flat face trigger. One thing that I did notice almost immediately is that this thing is very crisp and extremely light, almost too light for my liking. Because I am used to that four and a half pound super dynamic combat trigger from Geisley, this is single stage, so when I was back there taking those precise shots, there were a few times there where I actually bumped off a second shot. Could be a bad thing, but also if you know how to control something like that, could be something that is very fun, so chances are I'm going to try to do that a little bit more here in the future. Future. As far as some of the other part goes, Magpul K2 grip, put those on basically all of my builds. This is the first time that I'm using one of these minimalist stocks. They've been around for a while and they've always sort of appealed to me just because they are so light and minimal. With the way that this receiver set and everything was designed through Zev, it was already a fairly light build, so I figured that this would be a good option to go with. Again, fully adjustable, this thing does feel very solid, although it is minimal. And with the combination of this stock, this grip, and the strike curve on the end there. This thing obviously feels right at home in my hands because I run a lot of these things on other builds. Now I think I have this thing zeroed in good enough for now until I can actually sit down at a bench with paper instead of just shooting at some targets that have no paint on them anymore. Still forgot to get more of that. But I think we do need to shoot this thing a lot more. I brought a lot of extra rounds today because I definitely wanted to shoot the heck out of this thing. So let's get out here, see what this thing can do, and then I will come back with some of my final thoughts on the Atom Smasher 2.0. Hear that double shot. <laughs> Takes a little bit of getting used to.
wonder if I can hit those little plates. Oh yeah, Ambi. Nice. Throwing them right at the camera. Sweet. Let's go back to normal now. Let's get one more in with the Torx mag. This thing it holds a lot of rounds. All right guys, back for some of my final thoughts on the Atom Smasher 2.0. The first thing that we definitely have to talk about is the trigger. Now I have shot this Geisley single stage precision trigger before in the past, but never on a platform like this. I'm pretty much always running their flatty super dynamic combat trigger, so I decided to give this one a try. And as of right now, I basically put this rifle together to be more of a like training style gun rather than having a super loud, obnoxious pistol. So for the reason and purpose that I built this rifle, I do not think that this was a good trigger choice to go with, but you obviously won't know that until you try it out. Now I'm not saying that this is not a nice trigger because it is one of the finest triggers that I've ever shot. However, for this application, it's just a little bit too light for my liking. Here is a close up look at this trigger. There really isn't a whole lot to see. It is basically the same type of shoe that you have seen on some of my other builds. But instead of the two stages, the take up to the wall and then the break, it is just single stage. So I will put my finger on the trigger. It is a very light pull. No take up at all, it is just a super crisp and light break. Now if you're just sort of bumping this trigger as soon as you let off of it, there is a very loud, tactile, audible, pronounced reset. And then if your finger bounces off and then back onto the trigger, that is where you get that double fire that you were seeing me try to do and kind of do on accident. 
Now this trigger would be great on a rifle where you're dedicated to sitting down at a bench and putting down very precise shots. But if I would have built this rifle to do something like that, then I definitely would have changed the optic. Because the trigger is so light, I can basically sit down at a bench, take a lot of the human equation out of any accuracy issues I might be having, and then slowly use the pad of my finger to press off any rounds without any jerking of the rifle. But like I said, you do not know until you try it, so I will probably swap this out for a regular super dynamic combat trigger. Maybe since I have this trigger already, I should set up a long range precision AR, maybe an AR-10. We will cross that bridge when we get to it though. Now for the rest of the rifle, I will go back to this Zev receiver set. First of all, this thing is super aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. I think this thing actually looks better than the original Atom Smasher. I do love that original pistol build. However, I wish the receiver sets from Mega actually looked like this because of the different machining techniques. There's a lot more recessed pockets cut out of it. And overall, I think this thing comes in being a little bit lighter and I just like the way it looks. Now, if I grab a mag here, I can show you all of the different ambi controls. If the bolt is locked back to the rear on this side here, I do have a bolt release. I do actually like that touch because in the past I was running the Magpul bad levers that ran inside of the trigger guard here. This gives it a way cleaner design and look to the overall build. And the way it works is it simply presses a rod through to the other side where it activates the bolt catch on this side. Same thing with the mag button here. If I press it from the right side of the rifle, you can see that it presses up on this little lever. So if I'm holding the rifle in this fashion and I do not have my trigger finger accessible for some reason, maybe you're doing attack reload. I can come up here, grab the mag and then press this button with my thumb, come back up, put a new mag in, hit the bolt release. It just gives you a lot of different options. Now, do I need this thing to be ambidextrous? No, but it is nice to have. The Zev charging handle is also ambi, and this thing is obviously great because it just matches everything else as well. I think they did a very good thing when acquiring Mega by keeping all of their same standards. They've actually probably improved on them a little bit, and I'm also glad that everything is relatively the same, super high quality standards that they live up to. I think the only other thing that I really want to touch on is this Scalar Works mount. Now, I have done a video covering the Trigicon MRO in the past. This is a very nice optic. It's definitely on the pricier end, but this thing is battle tested and it is just a super high quality red dot. Now, Scalar Works, I've seen some of their stuff before, but I never really bought it because I was like, man, that stuff is very expensive. But now that I splurge and I have one in my hand, this is the Leap, I completely understand why these things cost what they do. Showing this on camera really isn't going to do a whole lot, but I would definitely recommend trying to see one of these for yourself in person. There's this little thumb wheel on the side here, clicky as you can tell. It is a quick detach for any kind of optic that you mount on here. I actually bought the MRO and the ScalarWorks Leap mount in a package together, shipped right to my door very quickly. So I simply drop this thing on the rail where I want it and then tighten it down. It'll keep clicking in as the tension gets a little bit stronger and then boom, you're basically locked in now. It is super quick, very, very easy to install. And because this thing is machined with such precision, I believe that once I actually get this thing very precisely zeroed in, I should be able to remove this optic and then put it back on as long as it falls in the same Picatinny slots on top of this rail, it should remain zeroed. Now, other than that, I do not have a whole lot left to say about this 2.0 build other than I am very happy, but like I said, I probably will end up switching out this trigger. That way this thing will then be perfect for exactly what I built it for. Now, I'm sure you guys may have some questions on some of the parts and everything else, so I will leave a full build list in the description down below. And this is definitely not the last time that you will see this new Atom Smasher because I will be swapping out the trigger and taking this to some training events here this summer. Now, I believe that's all. I really don't want to stop shooting this thing, but I am out of ammo for now. Speaking of that, I have to give a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon who supports the channel because without you guys and these videos getting demonetized all the time, I would not be making these videos. So I can't thank you guys enough for showing your support. If that's something that you may be interested in, check out the link in the description down below. Now, if you are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week and that is going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.